It was the year 2502 of the Imperial Calendar. The ogre tyrant named Gromash the Glutton, known for his immense size and insatiable appetite, was leading a small force of massive ogres from the Thunder Guts tribe. Their hulking bodies advanced through the lands of the Border Princess. as they moved to join their tribe in a larger settlement, located a few miles away. The landscape around them was a patchwork of rolling hills and open fields. Gromash's reputation as a fearsome tyrant preceded him, and tales of his insatiable hunger and brutal might were spread in the border prince's region. Unbeknownst to them, they were being preyed upon by the vile goblins of the Black Venom tribe, who were led by Grotzlik, a shaman whose cunning was matched only by his ambition. Grotzlik rode atop a giant Arachnorok spider, its many legs skittering across the grasslands, blending seamlessly with the undulated terrain. Only a few months ago, they had captured a once powerful Chaos Dwarf Lord lurking too deep inside the Forest of Gloom. What the goblins did to the poor dwarf is unspeakable, but the accomplishment had earned the shame and a great deal of fame and recognition amongst the local greenskins and Grotzlik was hungry for more. The shaman's eyes gleamed with malice as he surveyed the lumbering ogres plotting an ambush that would fill the bellies of his tribe with ogre flesh. The Black Venom Goblins had long made these open fields their hunting ground, using their speed and agility to outmaneuver larger foes. Mounted atop their own spiders, they were a swift and deadly force, capable of launching surprise attacks that left their enemies reeling. As Gromash and his ogres marched forward, Oblivious to the danger lurking nearby, Grotzlik signaled to his goblins to attack. Mounted atop his massive Arachnorok spider, Grotzlik advanced with his force. Hundreds of goblins armed with pointy spears and rusty swords were eager for battle and glory under the leadership of their mighty shaman. Many of these were spider riders, warriors capable of moving swiftly across the battlefields, attacking swiftly at their foes before they had any time to properly respond. With a series of guttural commands, the goblins sprang into action. From their concealed positions behind rocks, hills and among tall grass, they caught the group of ogres by surprise. Although the openness of the field and the visibility of that day allowed a brief time for the bulls of the Thunderguts tribe to respond. The ogres, driven by hunger and fury, roared in response. Gromash bellowed orders to his brutes, urging them to charge into the fray. The ground shook beneath their massive feet as they surged forward, eager to crush the foes that dared challenge them. The lead belchers advanced and positioned themselves at the top of a hill to overlook the battlefield from a vantage position. It was then they saw the extremely mobile force closing in. Hundreds of goblins, many of them riding atop massive spiders, were now up against them, including the monstrous Arachnorok spider and the shaman, who wasted no time in mustering the winds of magic to throw bolts of concentrated power towards the ogres. The ogres rushed to the front lines to engage with the rapidly approaching enemy. The spiraling, smaller but equally ferocious, swarmed in from the center and the flanks, their venomous fangs glinting in the sunlight. The goblins mounted on the big spiders also were quick to join the fray. They clashed against the ogres with reckless abandon, aiming for exposed flesh and vulnerable joints. Grotzlik, perched high on his Arachnorok, directed his forces with manic glee. 
his shamanic powers enhancing their speed and ferocity, while also attacking with his otherworldly powers granted to him by Gork, or possibly Mork. From the flank, a group of goblin spider riders rush to the rear of the ogres, reaching them just in time to shoot with their poisoned arrows at them. Many shots landed while others missed the mark, but some of those arrows managed to pierce the thick skin of the bulls, tainting them with lethal venom. With a roar, the ogres charged downhill against the attacking goblins, and with brute force, they killed many of the green skins and their eight-legged mounts. The spiders squealed in terror as their riders were thrown from their backs, the ogres' massive fists and weapons crashing down with tremendous force. Despite their size, the spiders fought back instinctively, snapping at the ogres' legs and bellies with their razor-sharp fangs and weapons. After a brief fight, the spider riders retreated to regroup and then later launch an attack on another exposed flank. And so it was on the main frontline assault. The Greenskins attacked in waves, charging in with whatever strength they could muster, and after a brief but intense fight, retreated to let another unit make their own charge. This tactical retreat was a hallmark of the Black Venom tribe, a strategy designed to confuse and exhaust their larger foes. The ogres momentarily caught off guard by the sudden shift in momentum, found themselves facing fresh onslaughts as the battle progressed. The rapid moving greenskins clashed against the ogres with a ferocity that belied their small stature, darting into stab and exposed flesh before retreating back to safety, their crude weapons raised high. The real killing began when the units of goblins on foot reached the front lines. With their spears and rusty swords, they hacked and slashed at the massive bulls. The force of their attacks was not great compared to mightier foes, but the goblins were cunning and cruel of nature. They had tainted their weapons with poison of different types, many of them extremely deadly. A small scratch could mean the end for an ogre, if the wound was just deep enough for a poison to get into their bloodstream. Many foes had fallen this way, and the green skins of the Black Venom tribe had earned a reputation for their ways of killing their enemies. The intensity of the battle escalated. Hundreds of green skins clashed against a few but mighty ogres. The air was filled with the acrid scent of sweat and blood, punctuated by the shrill cries of goblins and the guttural roars of their towering foes. The ogres stood their ground, massive figures of muscle and fury, amidst the swirling tide. Each ogre swung its club with devastating force, sending goblins flying through the air as if they were mere playthings. Yet, for every one that fell, two more rushed in to take their place. The hulking ogres towered over their foes, but the spiders darted around them with unnatural speed, their legs moving in a blur as they launched their attacks. The man-eaters with their great weapons crushed their enemies with heavy attacks. With each swing, many goblins had their wooden shields and bones broken, and their blood splattered on the hot ground. Many of the ogres fell, a few due to sustained wounds, but many started to fight slower and get sick, until eventually succumbing to the extremely venomous poisons. It was a fierce battle, grim and unrelenting, what Grotzlik thought was going to be a swift and decisive attack against the ogres of the Thunderguts tribe had turned to be a fierce battle, one that was turning very costly by the minute. Gromash, the tyrant, grew increasingly frustrated with the battle and knew that only slaying the shaman atop his massive Arachnorok spider would determine the outcome of the fight. Then the lead belchers began to unleash a barrage of heavy shots into the Arachnorok spider and the goblin shaman. The thunderous booms echoing across the battlefield. The lead belchers aimed carefully, 
determined to provide cover for their tyrant and bring down Grotzlik. As they fired, many projectiles struck true, tearing through the chitinous armor of the giant spider and sending it reeling. The sheer force of their confrontation sent shockwaves through the air. The ground shook beneath their feet as the two titans collided. Gromash swung his club with all his might, aiming for weak spots in the massive monster. The tyrant swung his club again and again, each strike aimed to crush both goblin and spider alike. Grotzlik countered with bursts of dark energy, some of them finding their mark on Gromash's thick hide, while the massive spider attacked the tyrant with quick and instinctive ferocity. Grotzlik fought ferociously atop his mount. The goblins that accompanied him were driven crazy by the magical forces that the shaman awakened around them. Any feeling of despair was replaced by a fierce impulse to fight on, until the punishment was too much. The heavy fire from the lead belchers and the massive attacks from the tyrant proved more than enough for the Ragnarok spider, which turned to flee. Grumash gave chase to the monster, enraged by the losses he had suffered on that day. And he had only the shaman to blame. The poor goblin would pay. With continued fire from the lead belchers, the giant spider eventually fell, its massive body not able to take any more punishment. Some of the gorges wasted no time and immediately started devouring parts of the fallen spider. By order of the tyrant, Grotzlik would be chained and taken prisoner. It is believed that the disgraced shaman was eaten later that day by Gromish the glutton, as well as many of the green-skinned prisoners the ogres took. But it was not necessarily a decisive victory for the Thunderguts tribe. Many ogres fell in that battle, and many others would fall to sickness over the coming days and weeks. Battles like the one between Gromesh and Grotzlik occur with alarming frequency in the Border Princess, a region defined by its chaotic and unstable nature. This land situated between the Black Mountains and the Black Gulf serves as a hotbed for conflict, where petty kingdoms and ambitious adventurers clash over territory, resources and power. If you want to check out another place where constant skirmishes and full-blown battles happen every day, we recommend you to our video on Karak Eight Peaks, where Skaven, Dwarfs and Greenskins fight for control of a vast stronghold. <laughs>